Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the new way that Ubiquiti does the switch port profiles. And we do have now that new traffic restriction in 7.4.156. We're also going to take a look at traffic management and a couple of things that people are confused on. So now with traffic management, we could either block or allow different networks on that port. And we could still make switch port profiles, say if we need a voice VLAN, and I'll show you how to do that. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit my website at MacTelecomNetworks.com. We do now have a merch store at MacTelecomStore.com, and I do have affiliate links in the description below. First, let's take a look at the switch ports and what has been done. So we could see that I have my computer right here, and our primary network is the default. When this primary network is just set to default, this means that it's that all profile that we would have seen before. So all of our networks are going to be able to pass through it like a trunk port. Now, if we didn't want this port to be acting as a trunk port, but we still wanted it to be in the default network, that's where we could do traffic restriction. So we could click on traffic restriction and then we could block. And if we click the drop down, you could see block all. So we're blocking all of the networks other than our default network. Now this isn't acting as a trunk, but more as an access switch port. Now Ubiquiti didn't take away the switch port profiles. If we want to use one, we just need to scroll down under advanced and then click on manual. Under manual, we can now see this ethernet port profile. If we check that off, we're able to select a port profile that we wanna use. So let's go create one. We go over to our settings wheel. And then we click on profiles, we have this ethernet port. We're gonna create new and I'm gonna call this VoIP because we're gonna make a VoIP profile. And then we have our primary network, which will be our native VLAN. I'm just gonna leave it on default. If we wanna add a voice VLAN, we're gonna go to manual and then we're gonna scroll down and at the bottom we have a voice network. So I'll check it off and then we'll select that network that we want. So I have a VLAN called VoIP and then we're gonna press apply changes. With the VoIP profile created, we still need to restrict traffic because this would allow everything to still go through. So I'm gonna to go to traffic restriction, I'm gonna to go to block, and I'm gonna block all the networks besides the VoIP profile. And then we're gonna press apply changes. Now that the VoIP profile is done, we could go back to our switch port and I'll just click on my touch max and then we'll scroll down to the bottom. We'll go on manual and we could see that the ethernet port profile and then we'll put it on VoIP and then press apply changes. So this way the phone gets a different subnet than the PC that's connected to the back of it. Now say we don't want this switch to have all of the VLANs trunking down it. By default, Ubiquiti has them set to that all profile, which is now called default. So any VLAN could get passed to it. So what we would have to do, we'd have to restrict some traffic. So the uplink to the 16 port switch is on my USW mission critical. So we'll go over to the ports, then port manager. Now on the mission critical, we could see that 16 port switch on port four. And if we scroll down, we have our primary network, which is gonna allow all those VLANs down it because it's set to default. And then we have traffic restrictions. So say we only want the default network and IOT to get down to the switch, we could do a traffic restriction. So we could click on allow, which is gonna show all of our subnets. So we just need to deselect everything except IOT. Once that's done, the default and IoT are the only ones that could go down it. So I'll apply the changes. Now, just to show you this is working right now, I'll do an IP config and I'm sitting on my default network. So we're going to get an IP from 192.168.10. If I go to my computer and select the computer, and then I switch the primary network to be on IoT, we'll get that subnet of 192.168.10. 20.1. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to release the IP and then I'm going to renew and we should get that different subnet. All right. And now you can see that I'm getting something from 192.168.20.x, which is my IoT network. But say we try to do it on a different VLAN. So I'll click on that port again. I'll scroll down and then we'll select maybe the camera network and apply the changes. If I do a release and then a renew, this is never going to give me an IP address because the camera network can't reach the switch. So I'll do IP config space slash release, and then I'll do a renew. And this is just gonna constantly spin and we will never get an IP address because we don't have that VLAN to this switch. So that is how you restrict VLANs from accessing certain switches or access points. Okay, now that we're done looking at the switch port profiles, hopefully that makes it a little bit easier for you. Next, we're gonna look at some traffic management and blocking in between our local networks. And there's a few different directions that we could do it. There's traffic to and from local networks, there's traffic to all local networks, and then there's traffic from all local networks, which could get a little bit confusing. So I'm gonna be using these two different subnets that I've created. One's the YouTube network, and then I already have my IoT network. 
So the first one we'll do is traffic to and from all local networks. So let's go back to our UDM. So currently this computer is sitting on the IoT network and let's see if we're able to hit the YouTube network. So I do have a phone at 192.168.4.7 and you can see that the requests are going through. If we're sitting on that YouTube network, we would be able to hit the IoT network as well. So if we want to block in between those networks, we could create a new rule. It's going to be block and then we're going to go to local network under the local network we're going to block youtube and the traffic direction is going to be to and from all local networks and this is going to be going towards the iot network the notes i'll call it block youtube to and from iot and then we'll add the rule now if we try to ping that phone again the request won't go through so i'll just press the up arrow and then we'll click enter so you could see that they aren't going through anymore so if I switch this computer over to the YouTube network, we won't be able to hit anything on the IoT. So let's do that right now. My computer is now on that YouTube network and we could see that I have a device on the IoT at 192.168.20.173. So let's try to ping it. And you could see that that request isn't going through as well. So when we do it to and from, it's blocking in both directions. If I go back to my settings and then go to traffic management, and then I pause this, you'll see that it will start to go through. Now you can see that we're able to hit that Philips Hue on my IoT network. Next up, let's take a look at traffic to all local networks. So we're gonna be putting in our YouTube network and then the target of IoT. So for me, I would assume that the IoT would be blocked from the YouTube, which we're sitting on the YouTube network right now, but it is actually the opposite direction. So if we're on the YouTube network, we could still get to the IoT. But if we switch over to the IoT, we can't get to the YouTube network and I'll show you how that works. So now we're back under traffic management rules and I'm just gonna edit this one rule. We can see that the local network is YouTube and then the target is IoT. The traffic direction, we're gonna switch traffic to all local networks and then apply the changes. And to me, this is a little bit confusing. So if I have my local network as YouTube and then the traffic is going to IoT, I would assume that would be blocked. If we bring up a command prompt and I type in ipconfig, we could see that I'm on that new YouTube network. But if we go over and we try to ping an IoT device, say 20.223, we're gonna be able to get there. I would think that that would be blocked. But as you can see, the ping replies are going through. So I'm gonna switch this computer over to that IoT network and we shouldn't be able to ping the other YouTube network. Now my computer's sitting on the IoT network. Let's try to ping 192.168.4.7, which is one of my phones and it won't go through. So in my mind, this is a little bit backwards. Now going back to the traffic management rule, if we click the traffic direction traffic from all local networks and then apply the changes, we're gonna be able to hit that phone at 4.7. So I'll just press up and then dash T. And now you can see that we're able to hit it. So that's going to be it for this video for the traffic restriction and the switch port profiles, as well as the traffic management. Hopefully that clears it up a little bit for you. The traffic management directions can be a little bit confusing. I'm going to be doing another 2023 full Unify build. So let me know what you'd like to see in that video in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.